All rise, we will have Excellencies, today we are gathered at the heart of a fully functioning judicial institution. In this courtroom, the once nascent concept of individual responsibility for international crimes is made manifest. The prosecution and the defense present uh, their evidence. Witnesses and victims tell their stories. It's been an active 12 months for the International Criminal Court. Two trials have commenced and the third is being prepared. The court has witnessed its first voluntary appearance of a suspect pursuant to a summons to appear, as well as the issuance of a warrant of arrest against the head of state. Judges are issuing decisions on fundamental aspects of the Rome Statute, such as the principle of complementarity and the rights of the accused. The prosecutor has signaled his intention to proceed with an investigation into the Republic of Kenya. During its eighth session, the Assembly of States Parties to the Rome Statute elected two judges to the court, Judge Silvia Fernandez de Gourmendi and Judge Kuniko Ozaki. Pursuant to Article 45 of the Rome Statute of the Court, before taking up their duties, judges must make in open court a solemn undertaking to exercise their functions impartially and conscientiously. This morning, the two elected judges will make their solemn undertakings here in this courtroom. The Vice President of the Assembly of States Parties will witness the making of the solemn undertakings. The undertakings of judges are of concern to the entire court. As such, the prosecutor, the deputy prosecutor, the registrar, and the deputy registrar are in attendance. Before the solemn undertakings, I invite the vice president of the Assembly of States Parties to report on the election of the judges. Thank you, Mr. President. It is an honor for me to represent the 110 states parties which just a few weeks ago proceeded 
to elect two judges to fill judicial vacancies that had arisen in 2009. As many of you are all aware, aware, the process for nomination and elections of ICC judges is one of the more complex procedures at the international level. The requirements set out in the Rome Statute, which are supplemented by the elaborate mechanism contained in the respective assembly resolutions, take due regard of an equitable geographical representation and seek to ensure that this court, and by extension the international community, can count on having judges of utmost integrity and professionalism, as well as an equally unwavering commitment to the application of the law, representing the, legal, the principal legal systems of the world. Although each part of the Roman statute system, the Office of the Prosecutor, the Registry, the Assembly, has, has its own demanding mandate, we all acknowledge that the true onus falls upon the judges who are called upon to analyze the evidence submitted for their enlightened consideration in assessing whether to authorize the opening of investigations, the issuance of summons to appear, or of arrest of warrants, and most importantly, whether or not the accused brought to trial are guilty. This responsibility is accentuated even more by the need to simultaneously bear in mind the need to respect the rights of the defense as well as to strike the appropriate balance with the rights of victims that take part in the proceedings. In this most challenging endeavor, which of itself places a Herculean responsibility on the judge's shoulders, there is the additional complicating factor of the need to interpret some of the provisions of the statute and its supplementary norms, which include lacunaire. The court must seek to address these matters, in some instances on its own, and in others with the assistance of the Assembly. The court cannot fulfill its mandate without indispensable assistance by states, international and regional organizations, as well as the vital support of the non-governmental organizations. We all constitute a global network committed to the shared objective of a successful application of the law with due regard of the principle of complementarity. Although we all dream of a world where the court will not be needed, Regretfully, history shows time and time again, heinous crimes on a massive and systematic scale continue to be committed. In the absence of the capacity or unwillingness of a state to investigate and prosecute the individuals responsible for such acts, the international community should assume such a role through the institutions and legal framework which states established in the Eternal City in 1998. We, the state's parties, renew once more our support for the Roman statute system and its court. As we start the second decade of the millennium, the Rome system will go through a new phase after the review conference is held in June. These coming four months are those key in our preparations for the consideration of amendments to the statute, but also to proceed with the stock-taking exercise of international criminal justice. The eyes of the world community shall be on the court and is gathering in Kampala as we assess the impact the court has made to our common objective of putting an end to impunity. Ultimately, the success of the Roman system shall be determined by the rightful place earned by the court in the international arena through the prestige attained by the quality of its trials, the appropriate length of the proceedings, and in particular, the wisdom applied by its chambers in the application of the law. On behalf of the Assembly, I thus welcome the incorporation of judges Silvia Fernandez de Gurmendi and Kuniko Osaki to the bench of the court, who I know will earnestly assume these challenges. Thank you, Excellency. We will now proceed with the solemn undertakings I invite the Vice President of the Assembly of States Parties to oversee the solemn undertakings, and I kindly ask the Registrar to assist him. Madam Silvia Fernandez de Gormendi, voulez-vous, s'il vous plaît, venir au Lutrin? aux côtés de Monsieur le Président de l'Assemblée des États-Partis, 
au fin d'y prêter les serments prévus au règlement de procédure et de preuve. Ms. Silvia Fernandez de Gurbendi, the Assembly of States Parties elected you to be a judge at the International Criminal Court. I ask you to raise your right hand and in accordance with Rule 5.1a of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence, pledge your solemn undertaking. Je, Silvia Fernandez de Gurbendi, déclare solennellement que je remplirai mes devoirs et exercerai mes attributions de juge de la Cour pénale internationale en tout honneur et dévouement, en toute impartialité et en toute conscience, et que je respecterai le caractère confidentiel des enquêtes et des poursuites et le secret des délibérations. Thank you. You may proceed to sign the your declaration before the register. Mrs. Kuniko Ozaki, please approach the lectern to stand beside the President of the Assembly of States Parties and make your solemn undertaking pursuant to Rule 5.1a of the Rule of Procedure and Evidence. Ms. Kuniko Ozaki. The Assembly of the States Parties elected you to be a judge at the International Criminal Court. I ask you to raise your right hand and in accordance with Rule 5.1a of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence, place your solemn undertaking. I, Kuniko Ozaki, solemnly undertaking that I will perform my duties and exercise my powers as a judge of the International Criminal Court honorably, face free impartially and conscientiously, <laughs> and that I will respect the confidentiality of the investigations and prosecutions and the secrecy of deliberations. Thank you. You may proceed to sign your declaration before the register. The solemn undertakings of two judges of the International Criminal Court have hereby been concluded in accordance with Article 45 of the Rome Statute. Uh, the two judges will be assigned to divisions during the plenary session of the judges, which will be held this afternoon. Um, the ceremony is hereby closed. All rise. We will avail.